Welcome to the Leading with Purpose. Each episode is an exciting journey, offering an exclusive opportunity to hear from Vermont's impactful leaders. Whether from the fields of business, government, or the nonprofit sectors, these leaders share their personal and professional experiences, unveiling the challenges and achievements that have shaped their paths. Leading with Purpose elevates itself by providing viewers with an insider's look at dynamic organizations that promote positive change throughout Vermont. Join us on this transformative journey as Leading with Purpose unveils the stories of leaders shaping organizations and transforming Vermont with purpose-driven leadership. Discover the power of leadership that goes beyond success, leaving a legacy of positive change in its trail. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, new episode. We have Molly Gray today with us. Uh, welcome, Molly, to our um, show. And I really want to thank you um, to accept uh, being with us today. So Molly Gray, um, she's the executive director of the Vermont Afghan Alliances, and also she's a former lieutenant governor. So we are happy to have you here today. And we really uh, want to hear your leadership mindset and your leadership journey. So uh, I have some questions for you. And let me start with the first one. Uh, can you provide a brief overview of your leadership journey and how it led you uh, to where you are today? Well, first, Caleb, thanks so much for having me. And it's really an honor to be invited to speak to leadership. I feel like I'm still very much on the journey. And when I was asked, I said, wait, I'm not sure yet I'm ready to speak on leadership because I'm still learning every single day. But um, as I was thinking about it, there is one sort of um, motto or mantra or uh, it's not a quote necessarily, but it's something I believe. And, and that is this. It is that we should never underestimate the ability of one person to do a lot of good or, unfortunately, as history has shown us, a lot of harm. I believe in the power of good, but it's just to remember that we as individuals have opportunities to be leaders every single day, and that can take many different forms. About um, a little bit about me and my background, and I guess the, the leadership journey, it's included growing up in rural Vermont on a farm where hard things just had to get done and you've had to figure out how to get through them. And I think that has uh, instilled within me, for better or for worse, a blissful ignorance um, to, um, the impo to impossibility and also where there isn't a trail, blaze one. And that has led to uh, skiing, ski racing for the University of Vermont. I was a division one athlete uh, working in Washington, DC when I was in my twenties for our now Senator Peter Welch, but then Congressman uh, working internationally uh, and on international policy with the International Committee of the Red Cross, going to law school, serving as an assistant attorney general um, I was deeply, deeply honored to be elected Vermont's fourth lieutenant governor and learned so much about leadership, not only as a candidate on the campaign trail, but serving in elected office. And then today, serving as a nonprofit executive director, helping to launch an organization here in Vermont that works to serve the Afghan community. But I keep going back to that thread that we have a choice as, as a leader, but also as individuals to do a lot of good. And there's so much we can do to help shape the course of history, to help shape policy, to help um, lead others. Uh, and that we have to believe that at our core. And I do believe that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great start. Yeah, sometimes we forget the power of creating good, right? It really affects everyone. Uh, so how would you describe your leadership style? You, you know, start talking about it, but um, what do you want to say more about your leadership style and how has it evolved over the course of your career and how your leadership contributes to both uh, organizational success and community impact? Yeah, 
when I, um, when I was young, growing up on the farm, there was this, if there's a will, there's a way mentality, sort of like, get it done. We can figure out how to solve this problem, which is very much focused on achievement and problem solving, which I do believe is a key component of leadership. But what I know now, and I've really learned is that leadership is not just about achievement. Leadership is about how you're showing up. How are you showing up um, in a leadership role? What are you demonstrating? What are you modeling for your community and for others? As a kid, as a teenager, even as a 20 something, I rarely saw women in positions of leadership, be it as Lieutenant Governor or as Governor of Vermont or a lot of elected positions in Vermont. We certainly didn't have an elected Congresswoman, which we do today, um, but also in the national security space, in the human rights space, in the legal space, uh, arenas that I've operated in as a, as a lawyer, as a policy advisor, even in the judicial space. And so today I think about that a lot. How am I showing up as my most authentic self? How am I showing up as a woman? How am I showing up as uh, someone working in a space where I've at times been the only woman at the table and how to be seen, um, how to uh, have a valuable contribution. So that is also a huge piece of leadership that I've come to understand and really appreciate as I've continued on this leadership journey, that it's not just about the achievement, it's about how you show up and what you bring to the table and how you model the best of yourself um, for those around you. Yeah, great. So can you share a specific initiative? I know you have many, but like a one that you really want to share with us or project where your organization has made a meaningful um, contribution to the local community. Yeah, I'm actually excited today. I'm in my office, the Vermont Afghan Alliance. We're a new nonprofit in Vermont that I helped launch after completing my term as Lieutenant Governor. Uh, today, Vermont is home to more than 300 Afghan refugees who fled after the fall of the Afghan government, after the US withdrawal in 2021, fled to the United States. Um, we have the largest per capita percentage of refugees in the United States here in Vermont. And I've always believed that we would never invite someone into our home and not provide them food or a place to sleep or safety. And Vermont is my home and feeling a deep sense of responsibility to kind of galvanize the experiences that I have and, and, op and um, skills that I have to help launch this organization. Today, we're providing driving lessons to members of the Afghan community, helping with the road test, helping to get folks into cars and into good jobs, helping with interpretation and translation and case management um, with all of the different pieces that a new person in a foreign land is trying to navigate. But of course, that's even more challenging when you don't speak the language and um, it's tough. And it's been an incredible opportunity to also work with communities across the state uh, with the Montpelier uh, CB RAND community, the Central Vermont Refugee Action or Asylum Network. Um, and just with uh, so many different community partners who are coming together, volunteers included, to make the Afghan community feel welcome. And I love this work. It's a new type of leadership. Um, and I'm learning a lot through it. And I'm really embracing it. And I. I'm excited about as much as I'm giving, I'm excited about as much as I'm learning in the process as a new leader in a new space. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when uh, leaders get experience, they think that their job is to teach everything they know. But as you said, learning, it's also very, very important part of being, being an effective leader. So uh, in what ways do you believe purpose-driven leadership can transform not only organization, but also entire communities? I love, I love this question because for me, it's really hard to lead if you don't feel purpose. I think that it's at the core of 
leading an organization, leading a movement, leading an office, a, a lieutenant governor's office. It's uh, relevant to leading on human rights issues or being an advocate. It's it's so relevant to seeing big policy change, which I think is also a part of leadership. But as I was thinking about purpose, there's often this feeling within the nonprofit community that if you're not so deeply purpose driven that you're willing to give up everything else around you that you're not really as dedicated and there's this competition around dedication and so i think that purpose also has to be balanced against or coupled with other extremely important components self-care for example we often talk about here at the alliance for key principles that you take care of yourself first and foremost so that you can provide the best care and support to those around you, be it your colleagues or the Afghan clients who are coming into the office and are in crisis and need assistance and support and guidance. Um, treating everyone with respect and then trying to have fun in the process, um, but self-care being the, the biggest component of that. And as an executive director, and as a former Lieutenant Governor, I, take that very seriously now and even more so as I get older and I'm a new mom now. And um, if I am in my best care space, my, my best, being my best self and I'm taking care of myself, that I'm able to see issues, that I'm able to be creative, that I'm able to give the best of me to those around me. And I think that that is not something that's often talked about in leadership or, or the leadership that I've seen in the past, but it needs to be talked about and it needs to be prioritized because I think it's a key component and has to be coupled with purpose. Um, I also think that process really matters and that process is having a thoughtful process in setting up an office in guiding or empowering other people. Um, it takes time and it means sometimes you have to go slow. Right? It's not a get it done. It is how are we doing this? And how are we doing this in a way that doesn't create harm, but actually creates more opportunity? Um, that's really important. And I know these may seem like basic things, but I see them as key components. And then finally, trust being at the root of everything that you're building. Um, trust in the community that you're working within, that you're doing what you say you're going to do and you're doing it really well and you're showing up with dignity and you're showing up with an integrity and leading by example every day, which again, should seem like basic tenets of good leadership, but I think that we lose sight of those and we're seeing it in the world that we're in today. And I'll leave it at that. I don't need to go much deeper than that, but um, it's really important. So. Yes. Purpose plus. We call it purpose plus. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I like that term. It's pretty good. Like, okay, I might steal it. Purpose plus. Yeah, great. So sometimes we think that uh, basic things are like really uh, like the first step to do, uh, but sometimes they are really difficult to succeed. So all the things you listed, they are so important. So do you have any story which has these things in it? Like, can you share a success story highlights that approach? Yeah, as a nonprofit, um, oftentimes, and nonprofit leaders know this, you're grant funded and you write these grants and you think you really know, you're like, I've got a, I think I know a problem and I know, I think I know how to solve it and I'm going to seek funding and support to do that. And then you realize that, wait, that was my understanding of an issue or that actually isn't the right solution for um, this problem that's evolving and working now with the Afghan community, a community that is still connected to a country that is largely war torn, um, families that are separated, uh, obviously tremendous cult cultural differences. I've had to take whatever I know of Afghanistan and working internationally, throw it out the window and just sit back and listen and really observe and try to learn and unlearn. Um, you know, I'll share an example that it's small and it may seem trivial, but I'll share it. It's uh, 
I was really concerned when I first started working with the community and stepped into a role as an executive director, which is temporary because I will get out of the way and the organization that I'm working with will be led by the Afghan community fully and we're moving in that direction. I said, do I need to wear a headscarf or a job? Like I really want to be culturally appropriate. And this amazing program officer that works in the office, this woman said, Molly, you recognize that by wearing the hijab, by putting on the headscarf, not because it's your belief, but because you believe it is what is culturally appropriate, that you are institutionalizing and demonstrating as a leader that that is your, it is your support, that this is what is customary and what is necessary, not only in Afghanistan, but right here in the United States, right here in Vermont and right here in our community. And it was the first like kind of light slap to the face of, wait a second, I need to step back and just listen and observe and learn and really trying to do that now at, on every, at every step. And I think that's part of leadership. It is the ability to um, remove yourself from the center and put yourself in a place where you're learning and experiencing and showing up um, Try, having the humility, like having the humility to see the big picture and to course correct. So that's one piece. I also think that um, to go back to this, this discussion of self-care, I am a new mom. I have today, I was in, in March of 2024, I have an eight month old and I took some maternity leave and I came back after 12 weeks, which was really tough in my office you can't see it right now but in my office on the floor here i have um my son jack's toys i have blankets i have ch a little chair for him um he comes to work with me quite often because it's just the way it is when childcare is closed and i've tried to model and embrace that being a leader um means also kind of accepting and modeling having a family friendly workspace. And that also means being a mom and that I can be both and I can do that. And to show the staff and the community around me that kids are welcome here. <laughs> and it's okay to be both. And that we really want to accept and embrace and celebrate each other fully. And that that doesn't mean hiding your family or um, having anyone, not forcing anyone to sacrifice between being both of those things. So uh, I show I show up with that today, and I think that's really important um, and a part of the approach. Yeah, so I have uh, all these questions just to hear and understand uh, your leadership mindset, and you have given such a great examples. But if you want to add anything you want to add, uh, it will be great to hear in addition to these questions. Then I will have one last uh, question for you. Um, I guess I was thinking about the last point, D modeling. I mean, it's how, how we're modeling leadership um, and having, having time for self-care and having time to really think about what it means to show up as our best selves. And I know I've said that th throughout, but I really feel that now as part of embracing the journey um, and also moving from, as I said earlier, that place of being the doer that rolls up the sleeves, like on the farm as like, let's figure out how to get it done, which is important, but what does it mean to inspire, empower others to do their best work? What does it mean to just have the peace of mind and the clarity to say, okay, this isn't a crisis, and I want to. I'm going to help you figure this out. We're going to problem solve together. Um, I really, I'm enjoying. <laughs> I'm almost forty, and I'm enjoying. I think having a little bit of clarity around um, what it means to lead versus what it means to do, and that's exciting. Um, and I'm really excited about this next, this next chapter. I don't even know what it is, but. You know, part of it's the work that I'm doing now, but what the future will look like and um, just embracing being okay with who I am and what I've done and what I have to bring to the table and um, blazing a trail where there isn't one. Yeah. So um, 
as a Turkish American and just immigrant woman who moved to United States and in Montpelier, Vermont, like seven years ago, all the things you mentioned, it really resonated with me so much. And I am so inspired and I'm so honored listening this from you and like hearing all the things you are doing for other immigrant women. It is really so motivational and I really would you like to thank you again. And I just want to ask last question uh, because sometimes um, we need some self-motivation, right? So can you please share a leadership statement or quote uh, with us that inspire you in your leadership journey? So. I have so many quotes that I was like, oh gosh, which one would I want to share? Um, I, I do think a lot about what I was saying about the, a, a trail and where there isn't a trail, a blaze one. And I think it was uh, Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson that said something like that, where don't go where the path may lead you, um, go forth and blaze a new trail, or if there isn't a trail, blaze one. Something to that effect, I'm butchering it, but I do believe that. And we have to, especially as women, if we don't see the leadership, be the leadership. Um, and, part of leading is having that audacity to step into the impossible, not to take no for an answer, um, and have this excitement about the possibility, to go back to the beginning, the possibility of what one person can do. And I believe that one person can do a lot of good step by step, day by day. And that's exciting. So. I'll, I'll leave it there. And Palin, thank you so much for inviting me to join you. I know you've had a lot of distinguished guests. My leadership journey continues. and I look forward to listening to what some of your other um, guests and speakers have to say. And I thank you for focusing on this issue at a time where um, good leadership is so important and we're, we're thirsty for it and we, and we need to see it. So thank you. Yeah, and thank you for uh, being here uh, today with us. Uh, and sharing all this like wonderful stories and also your core principles and if I may call like your calling as a leader. It is like, again, so inspirational. And um, I wish we would have like more time. I could, I could have listened to you like forever. Uh, and, uh, but thank you again for being with us today and Thank you for sharing your leadership journey with us. As we conclude another inspiring episode of Leading with Purpose, we want to express our appreciation for joining us on this transformative journey. Throughout this series, we have had the privilege of delving into the lives and leadership styles of Vermont's most impactful individuals. The exclusive journey we have shared have allowed us to hear firsthand from influential leaders across the business, government, and nonprofit sectors. We have gained a unique understanding of what it truly means to lead with purpose. The heart of leading with purpose lies in its commitment to showcasing leaders who are committed to giving back to their communities demonstrating how leadership extends far beyond office walls. We hope you have been inspired by the generous actions of these extraordinary individuals, seeing firsthand how leadership can make a lasting impact on the community. We invite you to continue on this journey with us as Leading with Purpose explores the stories of leaders who are not only shaping their organizations, but also transforming Vermont through purpose-driven leadership. Thank you for being a part of this inspiring community, and we look forward to sharing more impactful stories of leadership and purpose in the episodes to come.